One of the best players I've ever seen. One of the best players I've ever played with. What you call a game changer. I mean, he can change the pace of a basketball game pretty quickly when he's on and ready to play. He's as good as anybody in the league. Mark Anthony Aguirre, born December 10th, 1959. Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame. Oh, hath thou forsaken thyself. How? Hold on, bro. How? How you, I'm saying, how, like, talk to me, bro. How is Mark Aguirre not in the Hall of Fame? He was only the high school player of the year, Mr. Basketball, McDonald's All-American, averaged 24 points and almost eight rebounds as a freshman, and took his team to the final four that year. First team All-American as a sophomore and junior, unanimous player of the year awards from, well, everybody, made it to the tournament every year when DePaul was not the most attractive choice school and was the clear-cut number one pick in a draft that included a couple handfuls of all-stars and, oh, a Hall of Famer and one of the best point guards of all time, Isaiah Thomas. He was the number one selection over those guys, and it's not like history didn't validate the Mavericks taking him over Thomas, who both have two championships and multiple NBA All-Stars. By his third NBA season, he was already averaging just under 30 points a game, five boards, and shooting over 50 from the field. For his career, he finished with averages of 20 points a game, five rebounds, and three assists. That's better than Earl Monroe, Bill Walton, Calvin Murphy, Tracy McGrady, and some guy named Bill Bradley, who were all inductees. Look, we get it. Not everyone is awarded for their accomplishments like they should, and some are overcompensated, and it's just the way it goes. Like Nas has zero Grammys, I get it. Some dude named Macklemore has four, highlighted by beating a scorching hot and possibly one of the best hip hop artists of his generation, Kendrick Lamar, for best rap album. It's life, but this guy should be in. He was a beast at every level and was one of the originators of the jelly layup that backed down from not a soul on or off the floor. But here are three reasons why I think he's being snubbed and at now 61 years old, if he hasn't yet, may never get in. Salute to Noah Jones for this request. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Quick reminder, the patron page is now lit. There, you can get ad-free stunted growth features, behind-the-scenes training videos, consulting, and one-on-one -on -one conversations with me. Become a patron now and show your support. When I reach 10 patrons, I'll be sending those 10 free hoodies from the merch store. So make sure you go ahead and check that out. Link is below. Enjoy the video. Mark Aguirre is a 6'6 small forward shooting guard from Chicago, Illinois that never saw a difficult shot in his life. He embodied what hoopers from the shy were known for, which was a toughness that matched or trumped yours. High motor and could flat out ball. He was the best player in the nation before entering college, a McDonald's and Parade All-American, winning as mentioned Mr. Basketball for his state. He chose to stay close to home and attend DePaul when there wasn't a program in the world he couldn't play for. He's known for being a dominant offensive player and later in his career showed he could play a little defense as well. Well, not like that, but it was the 80s, early 90s dog. Stunt number one, attitude. Now, that word can give off the wrong impression out of context, so I'll just say that it's not like his was bad. Just that for whatever reason, the powers that be aren't letting his slide like they do other guys, whom we'll just say they like. No shots at Isaiah, but come on. This guy has the most fights in league history for a guy under six foot, and it's not even close. He even choked his own coach like it was an everyday anger release. His coach just pat him on the butt and allowed it for years, in NBA games. Yes, Mark had issues with some of his teammates. It wasn't anything like it was a trade where he wanted to stay and he was thinking about uh, behaving himself and coming around. He just didn't want to be here and uh, made life around here a little bit miserable for us. And when frustrated with how things were going, he let them know and some coaches know about it as well. 
but he couldn't have been that bad to stick with the same franchise for eight straight years, then join a well-oiled bad boys team with guys just as tough as him and immediately fit right in, giving them two straight championships after they couldn't achieve that with scoring machine Adrian Dantley. I honestly think he just wasn't liked like some other guys who were far worse production and attitude wise, but his just lacked the charismatic impression those guys' bad attitude displayed, if that makes sense. For example, if Larry Bird fought a guy in a game, and I mean two-pieced him deep fried extra ketchup and then all shucked himself in post-game interviews, all would be fine and dandy. But Aguirre was unapologetic, and his anger was in your face, no matter when and who you were. Borderline dirty, and he'd just walk away from you like, this guy better leave me alone before I kill this dude. No smiles, just got his off and bounced. In today's world, just to help you relate, they'd call what he did at times as toxic masculinity. Isaiah's came off as, oh, the little guy, he's just defending himself and, and showing passion and such fight. Oh, the little guy is so feisty. But when your 6'6", built, was ready for the squabbles and expressed to anyone that they could go to hell if they didn't like it, it's a tough pill for some to swallow. And that's basically what Aguirre was outside of his amazing performances, a tough pill usually confused with having a bad attitude. The Hall of Fame will let you in if you have one, just once they like something else about you on the side. Unfortunately for Aguirre, I just don't think much of them liked him. Stunt number two, outside of scoring. I must admit that it was tough finding reasons for a guy I personally think did everything he could to be considered a Hall of Famer. But if there's anything he maybe could have done better, one of those is attribute more production in other areas on the floor. In college, he was the ultimate offensive weapon and he rebounded as well on that level. It proved to also be a recipe for wins and when he got to the NBA, nothing much had changed. He helped improve Dallas's record from 15 wins to 28 in his rookie year, then to 38 wins as the leading scorer in his second, to a playoff berth in his third, winning even more games. Since then, Dallas had won more than 40 games a season and even made the conference finals in 87-88 behind Aguirre's leadership scoring the ball. No, he didn't average almost 10 rebounds like he did in college, but 5 for a career at 6'6 isn't shabby at all. Yes, he could have been a better facilitator of the ball at the shooting guard position, but even then, that's not what he was drafted for and what was needed of him in his stint in Dallas. What's not seen is the team sacrifices he had to make when joining the Detroit Pistons by coming off the bench and giving up more than 10 points a game in order for that team to win back-to-back -back titles. That's more than an assist. It's also not as big a focus as numbers when being considered, and his suggests that outside of scoring, he wasn't really a factor. It's an area I think the Hall of Fame has confused with Aguirre and should consider his sacrifices first when evaluating his career. Detroit wasn't winning with Dantley, who was the NBA's leading scorer in the past and for Detroit, but bumped heads with Isaiah. As soon as Mark came aboard and assisted them in team chemistry issues, power off the bench, and team player attitude, they won and became a prestigious franchise. Had it not been for him, who knows what the basketball world would think of Detroit today. He was reliable too. Outside of his final season with the team at 33 years old, he hadn't played less than 75 games. Strictly focusing on his numbers, I get how they can use that as an excuse to hold him out, and that's a travesty. The same is true for Mark Aguirre. When I wear weapons, I'm on fire. I'm better than AD. Period. Player to player, ain't no comparison. Stunt number three, exclusive. Okay, you're pissed and all that, man. Look, throw the balls out. Let's do what we gotta do. Other than those two reasons, the other I can think of is that he's simply being overlooked, passed up on every induction for other guys they liked more or did more in their career. 
The Basketball Hall of Fame, although they have guys that many don't consider Hall of Fame, is a very exclusive club and as of 2020 has inducted less than 500 basketball individuals since 1959 and less than 200 of them are former players. Getting in isn't as easy as it seems for some guys. Mark Aguirre being one of them and probably the most egregious omission to date for the players that don't have off-court issues on their reputation. I get why Chris Webber isn't in. I get why Kevin Johnson isn't in or Sean Kemp, Rasheed Wallace, although I disagree. I get it. Even Tim Hardaway. But Aguirre didn't come with those off-court burdens so it should make him an easy choice. I mean, Carl Malone got in. Not to name names, but a list of players that weren't the most upstanding by public perception got in that had way more baggage than Aguirre. All in all, look, this isn't a plea for the Hall of Fame to let Mark enjoy his flowers while he can still smell them, or maybe it is. But as a basketball fan, even though I didn't grow up watching this guy, I can see when a player's talent just supersedes his pairs. And as a talent, Aguirre was as good as any in his generation. When you take everything into consideration, from his high school career, to college offensive dominance, to proving it in the league, taking a lesser role, and still attributing solid numbers, leading to winning to retiring and not having embarrassed the league off the floor, I can't help but root for him to one day get in. I know one thing, his Hall of Fame speech would be one for the ages because he holds nothing back verbally, and in his older years, that's almost guaranteed. Let Mark in, man, he deserves it. Salute to him, nothing but respect, but for these reasons, he's not in the Hall of Fame, and his growth was stunning. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out. Also, visit StunnerGrow3.com right now. We have some new winter merch for all your fashion needs. We have the Legends Edition package, the Championship Edition, and much more to satisfy your winter fashion. Once again, visit StunnerGrow3.com right now. Please like and subscribe to this video for more content. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth, man. Let's get it.